Okay, calculus in the AM. Welcome aboard. I've already started, forgot to start recording. But solving inequality, section 1.4. Just to quickly review where we were at, we looked at a very simple inequality. X is smaller than or equal to negative 2. That means negative 2 is included. Anything less than negative 2 satisfies the conditions for X. Interval notation, round bracket, negative infinity, square bracket for the negative two side because it's included. Now, something more difficult, we just graphed the blue and the red line. Negative x, negative one is the slope. Five is the intercept, so you can graph that quickly. Start at five, go down one over one, down one over. Graphing the red, mx plus b. Slope is two, intercept is minus four, so at minus four, go up, Two over one, up two over one, etc. Now, this is where we hopefully you guys are at the same spot. Really, what this is asking is when is this blue line greater than, so higher than, the red line, right? So when is this? You can just read this off the graph, maybe. When is the blue line larger than the red line's value? Because that's, a, if you're just strictly, who cares what the equation is? When is blue greater than red, the value of Where does it start to be equal? When do they have the same value? Yeah, three, x equals three there. Call it two, as you can say. Now the value is two. And that's equal, though. So that won't quite satisfy it, right? So it won't include the two. Now, which side, to the left or to the right, smaller or larger than two, or three, sorry, three? Smaller or larger than three gives blue the blue line larger than the red. Which way? You're saying to the right? Now, when is the blue greater than the red? I'd say the blue is greater than the red here. So I'd say when the x values, when you choose x values like 0, just put 0 in here. 0 plus 5, so 5, is greater than 0 minus 4. Definitely, right? So the actual picture is, is this line is larger than all of the red values, right? So do you guys see where you would arrive at a picture answer? Okay. Now, so whenever x is smaller than 3 in words, right? So in uh, notation, what do you guys want to practice? I don't care which notation. Inequalities? Sure. Doesn't matter. We have to know both. x is smaller than, doesn't include, so just smaller than 3. wished, you could have negative infinity with a round bracket, comma, three, round bracket, right? And that means every value to the left of three. I don't know if you've thought about, though, what it means on a graph. Basically, do, do you guys get what we're getting at then? When this line is higher than this red line. Now, I don't have red as a disappearing marker, so that's why I didn't use it there. We could have solved the same thing using algebra. Just to review some things, so it's all done. So, okay, we got the initial setup, right? Get this pen on, right? Negative x plus five greater than two x minus four. Use the same rules, but there's just one monkey wrench. But first of all, add one x to both sides. I prefer moving the smaller of the two x's, always to group on the larger x side. Why? Because there's less chance of getting negatives than involved. So, if I add 1x to this side and 1x to this side, it disappears, right, on this side. And you get 3x here. Okay, now what? Just like before, I add 4 to both sides, treating this sort of like you would with an equal sign. Okay, so 9 is equal to 3x. Then I divide by 3 on both sides. I chose this one carefully for a first example because there's two common monkey wrenches. 
when you do uh, inequality solving? What are they? Monkey wrenches, two problems. Why would I have to flip that sign? Dividing or multiplying. Right? So, just add this here again. Flip the sign, even if it's a less than equal to or greater than equal to. Flip. Now everybody knows what sign I'm talking about, the inequality sign. When multiplying or dividing by a negative. I'm running out of space, so if I put any G, you guys know what I'm talking about. Hmm, okay. That's an important one. There's another one too, though. This is my sort of like dash, I guess. So. The other one. Now, somebody, usually people don't forget to multiply or divide by an A. But if you're ever having a brain fart and you can't remember, why do I do this? Set up an example that you absolutely know the answer to. So you would say, two is smaller than three. Use something really easy. And you say, what if I multiply both sides by negative one? What would that become? Negative two, negative three. To make this sign work here, which is the larger of the two? Negative two is larger, right? It's the warmer temperature of the two, or whatever you want to say. So does that make sense? That's the example here kind of thing. Now that's a concrete example. Now if you don't, okay. For the green one, or does anybody know another common when do you flip the sign thing? People often forget this one. I'll give you the example first, and then we'll do the flip the sign. Flip the sign, I'm going to leave the space. Here's the example. Which is larger? Half is larger than a third. Decimal three, repeating decimal five is half. Okay. Does this bring to mind another time you flip the sign? Okay, I'll tell you something. If I take the reciprocal of both sides, I chose fractions out of one, so it's really obvious. I flip this one, I got two out of one, so two. What happens here? Now, do you guys see what I did here? I took the reciprocal, right? The sign flips. When, I'm not gonna use the word flip, because you often say instead of reciprocal. When you take the reciprocal of both sides. That comes in handy sometimes. Okay. That's just a, there are things you've seen before, but there aren't things you use a lot, so you could have been forgotten. Now, I ask the question, what gives a better understanding? I truly think that the graph does, but it would take you forever to solve equations that way. So we're gonna note algebraically. Also, your graphs aren't always so precise where you can definitively read. Sometimes you'll have an intersection instead, like in the middle of something. Like, is that, you know, 2.2? Is that 2.3? It's not very precise either. So we use algebra for precision. Now, a quick reminder. And I've already talked about some of these things. The biggies. Transitive. Now this should make sense. If A, I'm doing the first one here, if A is smaller than B, and B is smaller than C, doesn't it make sense that A is smaller than C? Now, I put example here. So if you know that one is smaller than two, and this is like my AB, and two is smaller than three, then, you don't even have to think about it. One is smaller than three. Now, try that with x's, though. That's where it gets a little more confusing. Okay. 
I'm not going to do an example for everyone, but I'm trying to get you guys used to reading these abstract rules without numbers in them. Because like I said, sometimes in your future courses, you might have to teach yourself a bit, depends on the kind of support you get in your university classes. Now, let's see this. If A is smaller than B, C is smaller than D, okay. then A plus C is smaller than B plus D. Okay, the, if you add up the two smaller numbers is what that means, and then you group the larger numbers on the other side, that inequality will still remain true. Okay, addition of the inequalities. That should, if you, if you ever need to really figure out what the heck one of these means, replace them with actual numbers, one, two, three, four. Don't make it difficult. Don't use negatives and fractions and stuff unless you need to. Okay, and we've used this one. You can add or subtract the same number from both sides. It doesn't change the sign. You can multiply or divide both sides by a positive number, and it doesn't change anything. We talked about this. If you have a negative constant, and look at how negative in math is often notated. K is smaller than zero. That implies negatives. If you multiply or divide by a negative constant, flip the sign. And what I just showed you also was the reciprocal property. Okay. If you take the reciprocals, flipping fractions, you flip the sign. Okay. Next thing, solving double inequalities. You may or may not have had a lot of practice with this. So let's just go through this, and I can coach you a bit here. I only have these boxes here. You don't have to fit your work into the boxes. Look at this one here, though. Okay. So here's what I mean by this double inequalities. There's this inequality, and then there is this inequality, right? There's the first one. There's the second one. If possible, you could do it one of two ways. You could separate this into two, solve for this one, and then see where it overlaps, you know, an or situation with the other solution and solve that as two separate ones. If you see and you have a hunch that you can do them all at the same time though, it saves your work, do them all at the same time. So I'm looking at this. And I need to get seven, negative seven quarters x alone. The first thing I have to do. So I subtract 5 from everything. I'll give you guys a second to do that. We'll match up and see our results, okay? So all three parts subtract 5. So negative 9 minus 5. The middle term, the middle expression, minus 5. 26 minus 5. Let's see. Hopefully you get an expression, something like that. Then I coach you a bit here. Are we all in agreement? I better because I type that. Multiply. Why did I choose negative four sevenths? By the way. Yeah, because I'll get rid of the negative sign, so that's the negative. And four over seven, seven quarters, it'll cancel and we'll have positive one x in the middle, right? But when I do this. I have to multiply all three terms by that, negative four sevenths. And because it's a negative, do the old flipperoo on the uh, reverse of the inequality signs, okay? Now negative 14 times four out of seven. If you're smart about it, you'll do 14 divided by seven, then do times four, negative four. 21 divided by the seven, then times. I wouldn't go 21 times 4 divided by 7. If you've got a calculator, you can, but I mean, try your best to do it without a calculator. Just a reminder. Okay. So I'm 
hoping you got something along those lines. I flip the signs and I have 8 is greater than x, which is greater than negative 12. Now, you might be thinking, this is correct, what's written there. But I've mentioned it's best if you always put your smallest term on the left. So I'm going to just rewrite this just to think better about it. Negative 12, smaller than x. OK. That's what I'm thinking, at least. In my solution, that's the solution in inequalities. If you put this in uh, set notation, the round square brackets, it would only be round brackets, right? Negative 12, comma. Eight. Why do you understand that, though? Hmm. Now I'll just give it a flip here. We'll see. Reciprocal property, though. Now, as I mentioned before, You could look at this, solve for that system. Then look at this system and see where they overlap, right? What solutions they share, the or situation. Or and situation. I mistakenly said or before. And, which belongs to the solution of the left-hand side and the right-hand side with the center match. Or if you could do all three at the same time, all three chunks. I said this is using the reciprocal property, so I think you know you're probably going to use the reciprocal property. Why would I use the reciprocal property, though, when you scan this first? Yeah, the x is on the bottom. There's nothing on the numerator with x's. Okay. Now, you might be tempted to multiply everything by x plus 1, but then you're going to have x plus 1 here and x plus 1 here, right? Then you've got a real problem. You've got x's all over the place. And you can do that method when you only look at two at a time, you know, or where you look at this. But it doesn't work well if you're trying to do three. So we're, first step is reverse the signs, and we'll go with that. So right off the bat, I'm going to go with six. Flip the sign x plus 1 over 2, and then the number 2 over 1. Keep it simple. What did I do? I didn't flip the sign. Flip to one sign, not the other. OK. This is making some sense, too, because if you notice, the smallest is 2. The largest side is 6. OK, so it makes sense just by a quick scan that, yeah, I needed to flip the signs. <coughs> what would you normally do to get rid of the denominator of 2? And it's a positive 2. Multiply everything by a positive 2. OK. is in the middle. That's why we decided that. What would we do to everything to get the x all by itself now? Subtract 1 from everything. And that doesn't do anything to the sum. So. Now, if you wish to rewrite it the other way around, do so. If you're going to present it as your final answer, I'll request that you do. So write the smallest, then the largest. 3 is smaller than x, which is smaller than 11. But let's see here. This was specific. Specify your solution using set and interval notation. Set refers to the curly brackets, x such that, and then. So that same information with curly brackets, x such that. Now. If it said set and inequalities, I just put in 3 is smaller than. I should, and I think the other day I forgot to put the x is an element of, and then you put in your set. Now, this is square brackets. 
3 comma 11 square brackets because it's inclusive. But that's set. How did it ask? Set and interval notation. The set notation is the bracket system, right? Round or square. Interval notation refers to x such that. X belongs to. Now, I'm not going to be too hung up on this throughout, as long as you identify solutions clearly, but you should have a bit of vocabulary and know what's expected. Now, I'll zip through this, because this is a thinking question. It's not an actively solving question. So this picture here, examine the sketch of the function. Why is some function of x? It's below. Determine the values of x for which the function is greater than zero. So when I see something is greater than zero, I'm thinking positive. Zero is my, the function is zero right here. Am I looking for the values below or above that? Above. Above, okay. Where does it appear to be? Two portions, okay, yeah. Uh, negative. Sure. Negative 2 and smaller is another way of saying that. That's yeah. good, yep. And 2 to 2 and 3. 2 and up or 2 comma infinity round brackets. It does not include, does not include this, right? It hits 0, but it does not exceed 0, okay? So it's only two portions, and there's no way you can unite them, like as in, in overlapping portions or anything like that. So did it say? It didn't say what kind of... Uh, Notation, so it's your choice. I'm going to use, I actually prefer set notation, so I'm going to just say the way he said it, negative infinity up to negative 2 in union, so or. Can't it equal negative? Because at 2, it's exactly 0. Oh, I, I wasn't thinking as I was doing this too. Starts at 2 and goes up. Now, I put a big fat U in there for union, right? That means or. It belongs to the first category or the second category. It would be incorrect to say and, because you could never have choose one number that belongs to this and this at the same time, right? They don't overlap. And doesn't work. It has to be an or symbol. Up, oh, you know what happens every time you make a circle. So or, I was going to put that. OK, one last example. This is a doozy. Can you factor this? We can. Luckily, we can. First thing you look. Help. Like, oh. like terms, exactly. Don't just start jumping into factoring. Always scan for like terms. So I see the number 5 and the letter x. This is my lowest degree. When I pull it out. I got 1 minus 4 x squared. Good thing I did that because now I got something I can work with. I can factor 1 minus 4x squared. <coughs> now, how do I factor this further? You, I could see people taking it in two different directions. They both involve a difference of squares. What's my next step? Okay, you're taking it halfway to a direction. Now, you reverse the order. To x. Okay. Okay, we'll do it your, yeah, we'll take out the negative sign. You just feel better when you have the x term first? Is that why you're doing it that way? Okay, and that's calm. You could actually go 1 minus 2x, 1 plus 2x. But <coughs> this is, like I said, two different directions. What, that was one way, keeping it the same order. But taking out the negative side, I'm going to do it in two steps just so you see. I know Ava knows she mentioned this. She's saying I like it better when I reverse the signs. Because then my x term is first. And that's a general rule of thumb. If 
you're going to play around with factors. Okay. Then factor the difference of squares. 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1. Thank you. Now, when you guys have done this before, how did you do the solving? Did you guys ever do something called sign analysis? Not as many people do this, so. Okay. This is going to be a new skill that we're going to use throughout the calculus course. We won't be using inequalities throughout the whole course. But this teaches us the skill that we need, okay? So I'm going to do, I'm going to just label what we're doing here as sign analysis on this. And it's an important skill. Okay. So I'm going to set up a number line. And I put in my zeros here when we think about this. I'm not going to enter every possible number. No. Which numbers? Only the ones that give me zero here. Now, I know it's not greater than or equal to. But we know that zero is the dividing line, like where you go from negative to positive. So we could get a zero if this part of the expression gave us a zero. Where does that give us a zero? At zero. So if you plug in x equals zero, you're guaranteed to get a zero. So I'm going to put in zero here. Then we say I could get a zero out of this whole expression when this portion gives me a zero. So you say 2x plus 1 equals zero, you solve it. You do that in your head? He could do it in his head, but that doesn't. Everybody's with me though? Okay, so I set that. 2x plus 1 equals 0, subtract the 1, divide by 2, negative 1 half. Similarly, this third factor could have given me the 0, 2x minus 1 equals 0, well that equals 0, 1 plus 1, divide by 2, 1 half. Okay. Now, I'm going to just give myself a little bit of space here to work with. Now I'm setting this up, and I know Hashim will have this skill down. So I'm going to get other people to mention this. I list the factors as three separate things, because I'm going to think of them one at a time. So minus 5x, then I list this factor. 2x plus 1, 2x subtract 1. Maybe I'm going to use three different colors, though. Just so you can see what the heck I'm doing. Not that you need to. Negative 5x, 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1. Now, I consider this the three factors, three separate little mini number lines, or whatever you want to say. So I'm looking at the 5x minus 5. When is that giving me a zero? Well, at zero. So I go above and I put a zero there. It gives me zero when I plug in zero. All I care about is the sign, S-I-G-N, positive or negative or zero. When I put a number that fits here, so between zero and one half, say a quarter, right? Decimal one, I don't care what the number is. Anything slightly larger than zero, smaller than a half, smaller than decimal five. What do I get from that? Positive or negative? So I put in decimal two five times negative five, I get a negative. That's all I care about. So I get a negative there, and I double check over here, and it shouldn't change. Anything larger than a half, one, 17, a million. I still get a negative, negative five times a positive number. Okay, I've looked into those categories. Anything smaller than zero, guaranteed to give me a negative times a negative a positive. Yes, thank you. Okay. Green. 2x plus 1. I look, where does that give me a zero? With the negative half, right? So I scooch over to there. I say zero here. Now, you might need to think about this. Anything smaller than negative 1 half. Choose a number. Negative 1 is the easiest one. Oh, I don't have this one. So 
So I say 2 times negative 1, I'm looking at the green expression here, 2 times negative 1, negative 2, plus 1, still negative, isn't it? So I get a negative. Anything larger than negative 1 half, and you can test it, will give me a positive. Similarly, 2x minus 1 gives me a 0 at the positive half. Anything larger than positive half, like the number 1, will give me a positive. 2 times 1 minus 1. Yeah, positive. Anything smaller will give me a negative. Now, I made sure I put signs into each one of those gaps or categories. You know, negative 1 to 0, 0 to 1 half, half and larger, negative 1 half and smaller. Because Remember, these are three factors in the same expression. These came from here, right? So if I choose some number smaller than negative 1 half, like negative 1 or negative 10, and I plugged it into here, this expression, what am I going to get, positive or negative? Will it satisfy this? Well, I know that the three factors will give me a positive times a negative times a negative which means all together I get a positive for this smaller than negative half. I think you see where this is going now, right? Almost. Almost. If I choose something in between negative one half and zero from this category, those three factors will give me a positive times a positive times a negative. So the net result, negative. I choose anything in between these three factors to give me a negative times a positive times a negative. So two negatives make a positive. Lastly, a negative, positive, positive. Oh. Now, this is a way to sort your thinking out. The solution set. Did it state we had to give us some I always go back, don't just start, just solve this, I guess, solve using. So I don't care how we do it. We'll practice with our set notation. So I'm not going to give the full solution set. I'm looking for that. Uh, the solution, though, is basically these numbers. Negative infinity. It was greater than, wasn't it? Yeah. OK, when it's bigger than 0. So negative infinity when it's positive, up to not including half, maybe half. Or, that's the union, zero to a half. Now, quick question. 